following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 20th. Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648, internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading up 177 points at 20,582. S&P's up 18 points. NASDAQ Composite up 14. NDX 150 about 1% to the upside. Semiconductors up 1 and 2 tenths percent. The Russell 2000 is up 1%. Uh, New York Stock Exchange up 3 quarters of a percent. Gold is uh, flat. Silver's down 18 pennies. Light sweet crude is, uh, we'll call it flat. It's off 11 cents right now. Leading the charge here, dollar-wise, the upside, you've got Alliance Data Systems up 21 bucks. 9% Sherwin's Sherwin Williams Company painting the town green up $12. Snap on up nine bucks. Buffalo Wild Wings up seven. Price lined up about 630. Uh, select Comfort, the uh, mattress. And I did get a good night's sleep. That allowed me, I think, to uh, sort of kick. Sort of kicked the uh, the cold. Well, I still have remnants of it, but I got through that opening segment where I use a lot of air inside these lungs out here. So, so far, so good. That is a, a good thing. Leading this charge here to the downside, though, you've got Tesaro Inc., TSRO. Off 12 bucks and change, 2.8 million shares to the downside. United Rentals, URI, off 5%, about $6. Uh, proof Point down six bucks. RLI company off 557. Um, so we've got some things to look at, but I want to look at what you want to look at. So I imagine that one of the first things you want to look at is hey, what are the markets doing? Where are they going? Of course, you know that uh, change to all out bullish mode on Monday. That means subscribers change right from the open on Monday, change to all out bullish mode. Now, Let's go see where the markets are at right now. Let's go take a look at the futures indices out here. We've got the ES Mini. It's got a little bit higher to go before it may run into resistance. May, because it could just take it out as the NQ has done thus far. Now, unfortunately or fortunately, we're looking at levels that are end-of-day levels. Uh, so uh, at 1.10 in the afternoon, it sort of doesn't really matter what we're at at 1.10 in the afternoon. It matters what are we at this afternoon. If we take a look at the ES Mini, that's the uh, left-hand panel of my chart. We'll go ahead and blow this up out here. What we will see is you'll see a nice little descending channel that price has been trading in. The ES Mini ought to be able to have enough strength to get up to the 23.59 level. That'll be slightly above the descending trend line, uh, channel line, uh, but it will be the top of its daily profile. Any close above 23.59 59 then you're going to look at uh, getting all the way back up to inside the 23.97 level. Now, we know that there was really good support uh, and that there was an excellent opportunity here for price to go ahead and make this move, right? Because what we know, I'll turn price off. What we know, and I'll turn off the weekly profile. Is that turn it off? No, that was a daily. What we know about the uh, daily profile out here is that a brand new one formed a couple of days ago. 
even the old one that was present, that was formed, had a bias to the, uh, had a structure, a bullish structure out there. What do I mean? I mean that point of control, there's three lines there, the center of the box was closer to the bottom. That told us that uh, buyers really wanted to explore this entire price area. Brand new profile forms, basically the same, just moves resistance up just a tad bit higher. It's telling us that buyers want to explore this ter territory. Now, do they want to uh, go ahead and blow right through it? That I don't know. Uh, but we'll find out soon enough. So no reason for the ES Mini to not get up to that top of that area, 23.59. And we're watching the NQ. We're watching the NQ and the Russell 2000. We'll switch over, take a look at the NQ right now. Today is a clear bust of that descending price channel that was out there. That's the way you like to see a channel line broken, wide price spread. We'll get to the volume piece of this. Right now, you've got price trading above resistance. Any close today, about 54.41 suggest not only are we going to go test the high out here, that high being from April the 5th, that being 5481, but we're likely to see is an A to B equals CD to the upside form. The junior one, the small A to B equals CD pattern, let's try to uh, go ahead and price this in for you, uh, it takes us to a price objective of 5513. That's the one to one. We know that one to one can be exceeded um, because that only happens 60% of the time. So you got 5558 after that. It looks like that is what's unfolding, but we really won't know until we see what today's close looks like. But so far, so good. If we switch over, take a look at the Russell 2000. The bullish market always performs better when the NQs and when the Russell 2000 are the leaders of the pack. Well, the Russell 2000 has broken its descending price channel, at least thus far. Price has gotten right up to the center of its daily box profile, 1376. The center of its weekly uh, box profile, which is at, uh, that doesn't even make sense out here. Wait a minute. Oh. Sorry, I gave you a bad number. Let's let's uh, let's just reverse it. The center of the daily profile. Hello, 1381. The center of the weekly profile, 1383. So this could be a pretty strong resistance level. In fact, closing above 1383 would be just another shot in the arm for the bulls out there and say 1393 and then 1414 becomes the objective. Yeah, look for the Russell 2000, the NDX 100 to continue to move higher and lead the charge, which is really kind of interesting when you take a look at the weighting inside of the Russell 2000, which is mostly financials out there, about 15 to 19 percent. I don't have the exact figure off the top of my head. And if we take a look at the XLF right now, up 23 cents out here, it's not like it's leading the charge, breaking through a descending channel line or anything along those lines. So the Russell 2000 has got some giddy up and go under. Imagine if the financials kicked in. If the financials kicked in, I don't know whether they will or they won't, but if they kick in here, you can expect a zoom, zoom, zoom. And we're not talking about a car commercial out there. We're talking about the markets cruising higher. Now, the real culprit out here, the real Debbie Downer, it's been the Dow, and I have nothing against Debbies out there. It's just uh, kind of been in the vernacular for a long time out here, <coughs> and it's the Dow's descending price channel. The Dow Equity Futures contract, it's headed to a price level of 26.59. That's the level it needs to break in order to have a breakout party all around the Equity Futures contracts complex. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back. <coughs> Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I gave you some levels to pay attention to. We're going to go check out some other charts and some other numbers that you can or should write down. Uh, I'll continue with the equity futures contracts, and we'll go switch over to the uh, cash uh, indices out here. If we take a look at the NQ right now, you can see the price is trading above Stevie's red line. That number, by the way, is uh, off the charts. 54.37 is the uh, number. We're trading at 54.45. So we're just slightly above it. But any close above that level turns up the uh, turns up the uh, price oscillator on the bottom of my chart, which would be turned up above zero, which would be a, a very bullish, uh, a potentially very bullish sign out here. So we want to watch that. We've seen price stay below. Stevie's red line inside of the NQO for quite some time, really ever since uh, looks like March 1st. Uh, so this would be the first time back up above it. And then we would see the highs likely get taken out. Uh, we'd see a seventh wave move potentially fall if the high from April 5th gets uh, taken out. But again, we're up at a resistance level. So this is going to be key watching how this closes. That's in the NQ. If we take a look at the ES mini out here, we'll go look for the Stevie's red line. I think we're trading just underneath it or right on it, uh, very close. And we're trading right now inside the ES at the 2351 level. So you can see 2351, we're basically right on it. So any close above that, a similar situation in that it'll turn up the price oscillator on a daily chart down below zero. That is a bullish outcome. Be watching for those levels out there. Inside the Dow, we're nowhere near it. But inside the Russell 2000, uh, this is what we will call an extension of yesterday's move. Yesterday was a little shooting star candle, the opposite of a hammer. So closing above yesterday's high is a uh, slightly bullish event out here. You're back above Stevie's red line. Remember the Russell. Now, it's price oscillator. It's not above zero just yet. It's got a couple of days to go before that event possibly occurs. So a little churning around here in the Russell 2000 while that occurrence um, takes place uh, is, most likely, is most likely an outcome. What else are we going to watch? I mentioned this just before we came on the air because I always like to go look and say, hey, 
what's happening in the uh, in the cash indices out here. Well, in the New York Stock Exchange, interesting. I don't think we're there just yet, but the number you want to watch, well, you can't really watch it because my system is going to be different than your system. But I can tell you that on April 11th, what I will share with you, on April 11th is when the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange hit a new all-time high. Now, major bear markets, bear markets do not form when that occurs. It takes a several months typically if there's one that's going to appear uh, there's there's not been a single bear market that has occurred with the new york stock exchange hitting a new all-time high that's not a signal of now you that doesn't mean you can't have a correction of some sort but nothing that is major out there uh so my number reading here 396 Five six one. Right now we're three nine six five hundred. Just before we came on the air, we were just above that level. Uh, now the New York Stock Exchange is not a new all-time high, but the advanced decline numbers, in fact, were. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading, New York Stock Exchange lower left-hand panel, that's above zero. Nasdaq composite way above the zero line. The uh, Dow is actually trying to get to zero. The uh, volatility index. That's not budged too much down, I don't know, 30, 40 cents out here. But, you know, if it really does get its act together, it's got to get down to at least 1282. You're at 1437. Let alone, I believe it really wants to eventually get down to the $11 area. So uh, that would put uh, lots of juice inside the market. It's not going to happen overnight. Maybe it doesn't happen whatsoever but um and and it's going to be about the close of that advanced decline line it didn't really matter what it was as we came on at uh, 101 or 102 in the afternoon whenever i posted what i do i have a question here says steve do you qualify do you qualify a retracement to 2300 not too major 2300 in the s p um it would be a pretty simple so if we go take a look at the so let's go answer that question out here and the high in the s p 500 this is the way i take a look at it which occurred on march the first the high was 2400 and a 10 percent would be 240 points so uh no that's not even a that's that that's just a that would be a retracement right 24 to 2300 that's 100 points um that's like four or five percent that's just a blip um you know that that's that's a that's nothing that that is a correction if we go ahead and we utilize the uh terminology we'll call it standard terminology that is out there uh corrections are 10 percent or more and uh, bear markets are 20 percent or more now you and i know that markets can make a 0 0.382 0 0.618 retracement and have nothing wrong with that of course it depends what swing point you're using if you're going from march 9th to march uh march 9th the 2009 to um the high on march the first 2007 do you really want to sit through a 38 retracement in fact i'm doing a workshop next wednesday and here's the deal over the last over the last hundred years over the last hundred years how many bear markets do you think we've had those that would be the to just to continue with the question that was asked inside the tigers then how many bear markets do you think we have had during the last century that would be a 20 percent or more correction you're absolutely correct 34 bear markets during the last century during the same last century, I'll just call it the last 117 years, right? We'll just start from 1900. How many corrections, corrections, those being 10% or more, how many corrections do you think that we have had? On average, how many? You're exactly right. We have one a year. Now, it's been over a year. It's been over five years since we've had, well, it's been over five years since we've had a bear market. It's been over a year since we've had a correction. That means one is happening. That is the reason, one of the reasons, I'm going to be doing a workshop next Wednesday, that each of you are already, you already got the RSVP. If you are a member at TFN.com, we've never done this before. If you are a member, there's going to be a link on your members page for you to be able to attend. I'm going to do this workshop in 30 minutes. This is going to be concise it is going to show you the patterns that have been out there at each of these bear markets, how to spot them. This is really for the long-term investor. Truth is, it's for everybody because these same patterns work on uh, other time frame charts, intraday time frame, 30-minute charts, and so forth. But this one is really for 100% of our listener base out there that has taken a look at their retirement accounts. And this will assist you as to when to be in, when to be out. So that's going to be next Wednesday. If you don't know if you are a TFNN member, just come over to our homepage, hit the login button, try to log in. If you don't remember your password, hit that button. 
they'll then it'll be a password that'll be sent to your uh, to your email. And if you don't get anything, then go ahead and sign up to become a member, and you'll go ahead and get it. This is something that you will not want to go ahead and miss out there. Now, as we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator data out here, if all three of uh, so if if uh, if all three, meaning the New York Stock Exchange, which has been in bullish territory for several days now, NASDAQ Composite, which is in clearly in bullish territory here, uh, and the Dow gets up above it. Uh, you can anticipate that we're going to see higher prices, that we will see the NASDAQ composite take out its highs. We'll see the NDX 100 take out its highs, forming A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. But look, it is a two-way market out here. It has been a two-way market. The, uh, the the sellers just haven't arrived. They, they, they took the morning off is what it appears. The question is, have they taken the afternoon off? What's really important, and when we come back from this break, we'll go take a look at the cash indices. I'll go ahead and give you some numbers to pay attention to today, because if you're short and the market closes above those, the old sphincter muscle will get pretty darn tight. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome 
back, folks. Let's go take a look at some of those uh, cash indices out here so uh, you guys uh, playing at home can follow along. Now, the NASDAQ Composite, even though you're not trading it, but it, uh, you want to pay attention to it. Uh, the number is 5893.16. So give or take, just write down 5893. We're at 5915. If we close above that, we're going to go run for the highs. We probably take out those highs. That's a seventh wave move. It means things have recycled, and uh, we have just begun as the song. Uh, uh, who, who does that song? The Carpenters right yeah i think it's the carpenters so we'll just have to go ahead and and uh, play that tune we've only just begun uh, semis out here semis which has uh, been uh, you know uh, has had some has been struggling for sure uh the number there is 990 51 uh, so you close above that, we're at 993. We're just slightly above it. Uh, that uh, says, hey, we go in at least run towards the highs out there. May not uh, get all the way up to them, but we certainly run towards them. That's what the semis would be saying. The transports have given you a nice clear signal. So for those of you that uh, follow the transports as a signal for the uh, Dow out here, uh, today you've now gapped up above Stevie's uh, red line. So that suggests that it, too, wants to head higher it needs to clear this uh, level out here though it's got it's got a natural line of resistance at about 91.54 another 30 points or so higher um so i'd say you don't break out the uh, party uh hats until that occurs that's in the uh, transports but it's off to a, a nice signaling start as we speak um if we take a look at uh, if we take a look at the Wilshire 5000 is above it, but you guys don't really track that. The NDX 100 here's the NDX 100 number that you can look at. We're above the red line 5437 and change out here. Uh, that's a signal that you run back to the highs. Um, you know you close below it and then it's been resistance. Okay, so you've got to be aware of both sides of the trade. Two way traders market out here. What I can do is share with you where we're at at 1:32 in the afternoon, and if you get a close below that, then you you got to say, okay, two-way market, uh-oh, one day up, another day down, one day up, another day down, something along those lines. There's no reason that that can't occur out here. But if you close above those numbers, what it does is really helps you to eliminate the thinking of one of the sides of the trade until you get up to some other significant resistance. All right, your role in mine is to try to identify where the snipers are hanging out. That's the beauty of using these market profiles. We know the snipers in the NQ should be hanging out at 5441. I don't know if we're going to close above that or not. If they're doing their job, we won't. It's really that simple out there. If we take a look at the, um, I haven't given you the number for the Dow yet, but I will. Uh, we're not near that level. I don't know that we'll get up to it today, but it's 2630. We're at 2583. It most certainly can. But uh, 2630 would be the number that would start to change the outlook that the Dow is now going to go ahead and participate in this rally. That ought to take us into a higher high into the middle of May. The S&P 500 slightly above its red line number. And I do me slightly 23.54.67 is the uh, number we're just slightly above it so those are the levels that i would be paying attention to and it, and these numbers are more important on the indices quite frankly than they are in the etfs because these are cleaner right no expenses dividends things of that sort to go ahead and muck up the uh, numbers that might uh, that might be there not that i can't give you those but just follow those numbers on the indices and you will do you'll do better than fine you will do you will do mighty mighty fine out there okay uh check the emails i didn't see anything at that uh, break uh let's go take a look at uh, some of the other usual suspects out here let's start by taking a look at what's going on inside the uh, japanese yen and uh, this is kind of like the uh, bad news bears, I think, out here, in that the uh, yen has completed a 1 to 1 A to B equals C. That means it's also completed a Gartley buy pattern. And that says that what the yen wants to do is the yen wants to go ahead and get weaker. And if the yen gets weaker, what should happen to uh, gold, what should happen to Silverado, what should happen to the uh, Treasury bonds, 30 year, uh, they should also get weaker out here. Um, we don't have conviction, so to speak, but uh, it doesn't look like we, I can tell you one thing, the descent in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Japanese yen is basically stopped at this stage here. So to anticipate that gold or the mining equities are going to break out from here, I think that's, uh, uh, that I don't see it. I don't see it in the chart patterns out here. Different case if we go ahead and we bust out the low of the uh, yen. 
But at this stage here, it's just giving you and I the uh, signal that maybe it's a sideways-ish type consolidation that's setting up that gets us up into could be really as high as the 112 area uh, all the way down to 108, um, which is a pretty decent consolidation. But we're not getting those signals that uh, gold is ready to uh, take off to the moon, as they say. If we do take a look at the gold right now, trading out at 1282, it's not exactly bearish. So I'm not suggesting that you uh, jump on the uh, short side of gold by any step of the imagination. I could change that outlook if we see a close below 1272.80. We are not. We are at 1281 as we speak right now. But you close below 1272.80, says you get back to 1260. That's really not enough to go ahead and short it. You get below 1260. Shoot, anything can happen from that point on. If we go take a look at silver here for Danny in Atlanta, trading down 19 cents at 17.97, it's having a bad morning. That's all I can tell you. Sorry for those sniffles. I try not to do the sniffles while I'm on the air, but sometimes it's either that or, you know, the other thing. And we don't want the other thing because that would actually look pretty terrible. Uh, and I'm just not into it. But if we take a look at Silver Danny here, here's the potential problem today, depending on the close. You're below 1810. You are trading right now at 1797. 1810 happens to be a daily profile. We really shouldn't have seen a close below that. You can give it one day. Uh, which would be for tomorrow for price to get back inside the range out there. But otherwise, this suggests that silver wants to make its way down to about the 1723 level. So the combination, the combined message of what the uh, yen is doing, what we're seeing here in silver, some people might think that's a leading indicator. Looks like silver wants to head lower. Gold should go test uh, that 1270-ish uh, type range. You get below that. Then 1260, you get below that, you know, then then everything is off. If we go take a look at the mining equities, because they can certainly respond differently out here, right? We take a look at Barrick Gold, up 24 cents, up 1%. What's it really doing? Found support. It found support. We looked at this yesterday, I believe, and said, look, it's very important for uh, Barrick Gold, ABX, a ticker symbol, to be able to hold 1889. The actual close yesterday was 1891. Volume yesterday was accelerating, 19 million shares going into 9 million shares, going into 7 million shares, going into what saved the day was 23 million shares on March the 15th. I don't know how many more days uh, March the uh, 15th is going to save because really price should get all the way back down to about the 1770 level. But not until you see a close below 19, da -da, da -da, da -da, 1889 is there a problem. But do you see that problem in Barrick Gold? You're going to see that problem facilitate its way all the way through to the GDX as well. Newmont Mining, M-E-N-E-M -E -E being the ticker symbol. Right now, it's actually got a, a little ways to go before it attests its support area. That's 3270, 3274. You get below that. That spells curtains for it. Uh, GG, uh, that is Gold Corp out here. The number to be watching in Gold Corp is going to be 1465. You get below that, could actually be an A to B equals CD to the downside. Just use your stops. Just be uh, intelligent trading. Have an exit on both sides of the trade. See roads with TF and right. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we speak right now, you've got the uh, you've got the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange at a new all time high. This won't matter until 4 p.m. on the uh, dot out there. But uh, assuming that the market closes or the advanced decline data closes like this out here, it's just it is just a, just a clear signal. You are going to see another new all time high inside of the New York Stock Exchange. It's not a matter of if; it's really just simply a matter of when. Okay, I don't see any questions out here, so let's go take a look at some individual stocks that are moving. Oh, Lightsweet Crude, I suppose. Uh, there might be a request to go take a look at the Lightsweet Crude. We looked at that yesterday uh, for one of our callers. We were paying attention to uh, the uh, the bearishness inside it because of the because of the uh, uh, the uh, price oscillator, which I don't have. Let's let me see here. Can I can I do this? Give me a second. I can add that to this chart. If you give me one moment, I can do I could do almost anything. Uh, almost because I certainly do know my limitations out here. So uh, which is always a good thing. So you can see, let me make this a solid line out here. The white line is a solid line. That blue line, let's just go ahead and increase that a little bit darker. So and let's get rid of the volume. How do you see how yesterday we had the uh, we had yes well there's two days before but certainly yesterday we had this bottom panel is what you and I are watching we had this uh, price oscillator turned down below zero not a good thing out here and there's no new profiles daily or weekly that have formed out here so I don't know where light sweet crude is heading its next level of support is very clear it's all the way back down to make 100% move a move of the set of swing points it doesn't mean that it can't just do some type of retracement out here the 5009 is the point six one eight and forty eight ninety eight is the point seven eight six but if it gets below fifty oh nine it's just going to make a hundred percent move of a move the question is, is it going to make all makes way all the way to the bottom of the swing point or just test the top that i don't know but i can tell you that uh, what i can share with you is you've got still have a falling price oscillator below zero that doesn't bode well you might say well Gee, Steve, if that's the case then how can the market or the s p more specifically be so bullish they don't always correlate 
you know, we've got to just take a look at one thing at a time out here. Uh, sometimes that correlation between the uh, crude and the market is like 50-50. So that's nothing better than the uh, flip of a uh, coin out there. So, you know, we're not going to just simply uh, tie our horse to that one uh, indicator out here. But, yeah. Well, I'm not going to tie my horse to just the uh, one indicator out here. Question, that's our working order to short palladium, seven, the uh, current contract at 809. See if we can go take a look at it. So let's see if uh, we can go look at palladium and look at the four different profile levels out here. Let's see if uh, this will help. So let's see, can I do this? Will that change them all? Let me see. Let me see. There we go. Okay. So here, this is for a uh, request inside the uh, Tiger's Den to go take a look at the uh, June contract for Palladium. And if we take a look at it, you're going to see f really four different charts and uh, bar charts out here. And uh, when they're colored green, uh, it's telling you you're kind of in bullish mode out here. When it uh, turns to orange, it suggests that a, uh, uh, that a top or a bottom, depending on where that color candle forms, could be present, which that's what it shows on the 60-minute chart out here. The 240-minute chart is still mean and green. 60-minute is not below any kind of market profile. You see on the uh, kind of the... The third panel or the second panel down, the one that sourced the second one from the upside on the 60-minute chart. This well here, I'll just explode it up. See these the, whoa, what the happened when I just exploded? Well, see these these little chartreuse colors out here. When those tar start to bunch up like that, that's another indication utilizing the uh, the TAS system that there is a impending change in direction that uh, is potentially forming out there. Uh, but here are your market profiles. The question was work in order to short it at 809. Um, that would make sense. Now you're not going to see a profile at that level. You would get back to the daily and it would suggest 80701 would be the level. So if you're waiting for palladium to uh, bounce up to that area, then uh, 809 is, is fine. It's game. But the daily top of the box is at 807. So you'd really start looking at around that area. Um, the 60-minute, uh, though, at this stage would certainly not be uh, confirming that. And the uh, palladium is up above the weekly level. Uh, the weekly top of the box, which is 789.69. But I clearly understand the 807 or the 809-ish type area out there. So, Mr. Z, I hope that that helps you out in the den, at least with regard to what the uh, current contract for Palladium is doing on four different time frames. What's the correlation between the yen and the ES? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, as far as percentage out there, or are you just simply looking at directional type correlation? Uh, why don't we do this out here? Uh, to do this, Danny, I'll just simply go ahead and take the ES. That's a 30-minute chart. What, to, what is the time frame that you're looking for, uh, my friend? What's the time frame that you would want to do that? And while you do that, I'm going to go ahead and insert the symbol for yen futures out here um, daily. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I have not gone back to do that study to be able to uh, tell you that, to share that with you. If I, if I knew it, I would go ahead and, and give it to you. But if, uh, if I just go ahead and type in yen futures, we'll just put in the... Uh, Put in the, um, let me change the ES to a line chart out here. And then you can look to see if there's some type of correlation here. Um, yeah, I got to turn off some profile boxes and stuff. And, uh, you know, so now the question is, is it an inverse correlation out here? You know, so it's tying out to the currency pair. There uh, we go. We'll turn it around. And take a look at it. We'll turn this to a uh, line chart. Uh, you know, you and I, we can do basically anything, right? Um, I don't know. Do you take a look at this and get, uh, does your skirt uh, really start to fly high saying, hey, look at that correlation between these things? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Danny, I, I guess it is, that's the 30-minute that's the chart. Let's just, eh, I won't put up the daily. Well, I could put up the daily. We'll just have to do this. Let's go to the uh, continuous contract for both. And let's change it to daily. Let's change this to uh, daily out here. But the bottom line is I'm not going to be able to really answer your question because I don't have the data at my fingertips. And so here's the daily 
to take a look at, you know, is there is, is there a correlation for you to really look at and factor uh, in, in this? And I'd say the answer is no. Let me just look at the longer term picture, right? It just sticks out at you that says, nah, it's really not there. So I hope that that assists you. But uh, you, you, you can dump all the data. One of the cool things with uh, the e-signal system and, and many others is that I take I can take all kinds of data. I can go ahead and convert it uh, to just the data points. You might say, well, what the Sam heck does that mean? Here, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give you an example. We'll just turn off the uh, get rid of the yen out here. And if I want to uh, take a look at just closing prices for the ES Mini as an example, all I have to do is go ahead and set this to the tabulation mode, and it's going to go ahead and give me the pricing. Here's the closing price, and I can dump all that data, and I can do all the spreadsheet analytics. I can analyze anything that I want. That's how I am able to provide you with sometimes when I say the correlation is 60% or 62%. It's because the work has already been done by me. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 208. S&P is up 22. Boy, it's not until you're kind of sick or under the weather, which I'm getting uh, rounding that uh, curve. Um, but to realize just how much energy, at least how much energy I use doing this show out here, because I could, I can see that that depletion meter is just simply gone back down to zero. It's a good thing the show is over in four minutes. I have a question out here from QQQ, the NDX 100, uh, inside our Tiger's Den, and the question is uh, thoughts on X. So let's go take a look at X, U.S. deal out here. Um, here is what we know. Here's what we know about X. Here's what we know about every single chart that is out there, no matter what time frame, as long as you stay within those time frames. That this chart, a price is going to perform much better when its price oscillator is above zero. I just taken you take you back into the November time frame out here, right? And we got clearly above zero back on, it looks like, November the 7th. Price is above Stevie's red line. That tells us that this price oscillator is rising. A rising oscillator above zero is, is muy bueno. And then price moves higher, does with less relative energy out here, giving us these different signals back in the uh, uh, December time frame. Uh, price starts to get below Stevie's red line, stays below it, it continues to act as resistance, tells us we have a falling price oscillator above zero. That just tells us we've got a retracement that's in play. Uh, then we get a nice little move with some volume, this little bull sash candle back on February 2nd. Uh, then price starts staying above that level. Right now, we can see that we have a falling price oscillator that is below zero until you see price close above 30 50 Four, it looks like we're pretty much right on it, um, then uh, the uh, U.S. deal doesn't look very good to me. You're in wave number, potentially you're in wave number six out of seven, could be seven. We did make a seventh wave top out here. Maybe you're going to make a seventh wave bottom. If price closes above Stevie's red line, that's a different story than QQQ. And if we see the price oscillator get above zero and prices above Stevie's red line. That's when it looks mwah, sweet to me. Now, that set of tools won't call the bottom, but boy, what a momentum move and signal it will provide to you. Likewise, it'll tell you right now, now is not the time. Because even if we go take a look at the daily profiles out here, they're going to say maybe something different. So that's where you got to use the combination of these different tools that are out here, um, which I'll be sharing with you. Two simple tools that you'll be able to use that for your long-term money, you'll be able to make the decision, do I stay in, do I get out? It's just that simple. We're just going to be long-term. It's going to be focused on long-term, but that can be taken and applied to any time frame chart it is that you go ahead and trade on. So make sure that you're a member of TFNN.com. If you're not, it's for the workshop that's next Wednesday. Look, if you can't be there, that's okay. It's going to be 30 minutes of your time. It'll be concise. It'll be to the point. I suppose that's what concise also means. Um, and it will be uh, spectacular. Uh, it will be information that you're going to use for the rest of your life and uh, pass that on to your kids, family, friends, uh, so that uh, for those that say you can't time the market, you know who those people are, don't you? Those people are the ones that are making money off of your money. Because it's usually those guys that have their hands and gals that have their hands in the pot out there that are the ones that are saying you can't time the market. You know what? I'm not looking for you to time it intraday, daily. You don't need to do that. But for your long-term capital, there's a point where you just simply have to protect your assets because you do not. I repeat, you do not want to ride a market down 30, 40, 50 percent. You don't want a 2000 slide or a 2007 slide. And folks, bear markets happen on average once every five years. There's one a coming. I'm going to show you how to spot it. Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next. After David, we've got Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. Andy Heck from 5 to 6. Basil Chapman for a great workshop tonight. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Take care.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.